Well, first of all, it's a good uh, capsule summary, uh, Brian. But uh, yeah, around, of course, the Silicon Valley Bank was taken over by the regulators on March 10th. But you can see it coming. You know, it was in distress. There was $40 billion pulled out of that bank in one day on Thursday, March 9th, the day before it was taken over. $40 billion just, you know, hit the road, just just left. It was a, it was a complete collapse. And uh, I was having a discussion with my editor, uh, my, my managing editor of one of our publications, Strategic Intelligence. And we had, you know, you work a little bit in advance and I planned to write something for our uh, April issue on climate change. You know, it's a big subject and I had outlined it. And he said, Jim, we got to do this banking crisis. I said, of course, let's put climate change down the road. We'll work on the banking crisis. So I started researching writing on Silicon Valley Bank. And then I, you know, I'll get into more detail. But two days later, they took over Signature Bank. So, well, we got two banks now. We got to, you know, zero in on this. It was a crypto connection and Signature. We we'll talk more about that. And then the next day, uh, you know, First Republic hanging by a thread. You know, it's still it's still hanging by a thread. By the way, again, we'll, we'll go over all this in more detail. And so I, I couldn't write fast enough because as I'm writing, the story is unfolding. And then you get all the corruption. Um, you know, insiders selling stock before the crash. Mary Daly, the chief regulator, president of the Federal Reserve Bank in New York, she's running around uh, doing uh, elemental P plus and pride flag and all this stuff. Fine, that's, you know, it's a free country. You can do that if you like, but she wasn't running the bank and she knows nothing about risk management. She's a labor economist, protege of Janet Yellen, came up the ranks, but knows nothing about risk management or actually running a bank. So it, it just got worse. And then, then here comes Credit Suisse, right? The one thing I know, um, you know, um, Maybe a little before your time, Brian, but there was a very, very popular uh, rock celebrity writer in the 1960s named Marianne Faithful. Uh, she had a great career, lots of hits, Mick Jagger's girlfriend, etc. But her summary of the 60s, she said, um, uh, if I wasn't there, it didn't happen. And I thought that was a very, very good way to put it. In her case, that was true. But I started to feel that way about financial crises. If I wasn't there, it didn't happen. I go back to uh, the Herstadt bank collapse in 1974, which was a shock that was uh, back before, uh, that, was a, that was a foreign exchange crisis, but it highlighted the fact that when European banks closed and the US banks were just opening, if you had a failure here, it never settled over here. It wasn't real time settlement. So there was just all these open positions of a bank that had just failed. Um, you know, the s &R crisis in the 1980s, the uh, Latin American debt crisis, the early to mid 1980s, the flash crash in 1987, the Mexican tequila crisis, 1994, long term capital, Russia, 1998. Of course, I negotiated that bailout dot com crash, 2007 mortgages, 2008, everything falls apart, 2020 COVID and now today. So I've, you know, I've, I've, uh, I don't know if I'm a magnet for trouble, but I've seen my share of financial crises um, and as an analyst, they have certain things in common. You know, the, the, the entity is always different, the currency is always different, but the dynamics are very much the same. And the one thing I can say um, to our viewers is that this is not over. Um, there's been a little bit of a sigh of relief, stock market rallied uh, a little bit toward the end of, uh, uh, beginning of April. Um, you know, and okay, that's that's a normal reaction, but any, any thought that the problem's been solved, the bailout's complete, you're not gonna hear more, is just not true. Uh, there's more coming, get ready for it, I can't tell you. I'm not gonna you know, pick a specific name, and we all know the names of the big banks that might be in distress. Um, what, you know, is Deutsche Bank or Barclays or HSB Santander. I'm, again, I'm not picking on any of them. I'm just saying that there are more dominoes waiting to fall. You, know, you mentioned the velocity of this happening, and I wanna just quickly talk about that, Jim, because you just said, $40 billion being removed from a bank in 24 hours. Like, I didn't even think that was possible. And put that on top of, or maybe that's because of, the rumor spreads so fast. And again, you've lived through this at long-term capital management in 98, and you've seen, yeah. like you said, a litany of bank failures. Tell me about this one and how it's different now, and I guess forevermore, it, with the fact that we've got Twitter, we've got social media, and we've got electronic banking I actually still am flabbergasted that people like Peter Thiel could take out billions kind of online. I remember uh, famously, Jim, when the, when the mortgage crisis happened here, I wanted to get my money out of NatWest. And funny enough, right. when I called them, they wouldn't let me do it on the phone. They said, you have to come into a branch. And right. I said, oh, I see what you're doing. You're trying to stop a bank run. I'm like, I'm sure that's not legal but I get it, they were putting frictions in place. I had to go and line up with 100 people, and then by then it was either gonna be over, or I couldn't do it, or it would slow it down. But speak on maybe the fact, how fast the rumors spread, and then how fast people would get the money out, um, how that's different than the previous ones you've seen. 
Well, you, you make a very good point, Brian. So let's go back to um, uh, either Brazil, Mexico, Argentina, the Latin American debt crisis, broadly defined in the early 1980s. That, that played out at the intense phase lasted about three years, you know, 82, 83, 84. It wasn't until 1990 that we got around to Brady bonds, which were the ultimate refancy, refinancing technique. But the intense period lasted about three years. Come forward to 1998, long-term capital management. That uh, was about three months. That was uh, July, August, September, 1998. And they, well, the particular name of the bank, but they backed one of the uh, um, one of the stable coins. Actually, it's USDC. Uh, had trillion dollars in Silicon Valley Bank. And they talked about you know all these small entrepreneurs and startups. They got 100 employees and five million in working capital, and that money's gone, and they're all going to fail. There was something to that, but uh, the fact is, you had Roku, uh, uh, Cisco, uh, eBay. I mean, there were huge companies with multi-billion-dollar deposits in that bank. It wasn't all uh, all a bunch of little guys. So, um, but yeah, you can. Uh, yeah, in the old days, you have the lineup around the the block, and maybe it was raining. You're standing there in the rain, waiting for your turn to get up to the tower. Now you can be in line at McDonald's, you know, with your cell phone, and just a couple of hits, QR code, and boom, uh, you know, ten million dollars is gone. And what Peter Thiel did, uh, and he was right. I mean, I'm not criticizing him. He got his own money up, but he he sent out like an SOS to Silicon Valley. He said, "All of you, whoever you are, get your money out now." Uh, and a lot of a lot of people did, and that was that forty billion dollars. So so the time the time frame is becoming more more compressed because of technology. You're exactly right about that, which means that the response function has to be equally compressed, or else you are going to have all the consequences of a you know an honest to goodness global financial crisis. So and I'm not sure if everyone knows the sequence, but on Friday night, March 10th, the FDIC um, took over Silicon Valley Bank. And they issued a press release, and they said, "Here's what we're doing: um, we're taking over. Uh, we're putting it into what's called a receivership. Um, anyone with two hundred fifty thousand dollars or less, your deposits are fully insured. No, no errors. You'll have your money Monday morning. And over two hundred fifty thousand dollars, your deposits are gone." 